In this question, we're given information about two investments, investment A and investment B, and we're asked to answer a multiple choice question that gets at which one's more valuable and which one is riskier. And so the way you answer that question, which one is more valuable, is you find the present value of both investments, find the value of both investments, and whichever one is higher is the one that has more value, is more valuable, whichever one has a, and then you can figure, then you figure out the, which one has a higher expected return, and the one with the higher expected return is the one that has more risk. So we'll look at the information, we'll figure out the two values, the two expected returns, and then we can figure out which one has more value and which has more risk. So it says A has an expected return of 7.8%, so that's given to us. So here we've got A and B. A, 7.8%. Expected to pay $100 per year such that its first annual payment is expected later today and its last annual payment is expected in six years from today. So again, go to a timeline. First today, last in six years, $100. So it's 100 today, 100 in a year, 100 in two years, 100 in three years, 100 in four years, 100 in five years, and 100 in six years. And even though the last payment's in six years, because the first one is today, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven payments. And we can figure out the value of this as the value of a seven period annuity due. So because it's an annuity due, or because the first payment is today, we'll want to put it in begin mode. We'll want to tell it n is equal to 7 because there are 7 payments. And by telling it begin mode, the calculator knows, okay, the first one is today, the second's in a year, the third one's in two years, and the last one, the seventh one's actually in six, which is, of corresponds to our timeline. We add v is equal to zero. There's no extra payment at the end. I percent, 7.8 percent, that's given. We solve for PV. And what do we get? Minus 500, negative 565 dollars and 11 cents. So what that says is if I invested 565 11, I could buy investment A, which would give me $100 today, and then 100 in a year, 102 years, 103, 4, 5, and 6. Alternatively, $100 plus $100 divided by 1.078 plus 100 over 1.078 squared plus 100 over 1.078 to the third plus 100 over 1.078 to the fourth plus 100 over 1.078 to the fifth plus 100 over 1.078 to the sixth is equal to 565.11. So now we know the value of A and the expected return of A. How about B? B is expected to pay $38 per year forever. It is expected to make its first payment in one year from today. So nothing today, then 38, 38, 38, forever and ever and ever and ever. And it has a value of 520. Well, we can see A has a value of 565.11, B has a value of 520, so we know that the value of A is greater than the value of B. Now, in order to talk to address risk, we have to figure out the expected return on B. Well, that's just a fixed perpetuity, and we know that with a fixed perpetuity, present value is equal to the regular cash flow over the discount rate, over the expected return. Multiply both sides by R, divide both sides by present value. 
you get that the return, expected return on this is equal to whatever that regular cash flow is, which in this case is $38, divided by the value, which is given as 520, 38 over 520 is equal to 7.3%. So if A has a return of 7.8% and B has an expected return of 7.3, then A has a higher expected return and so the risk of A is greater than the risk of B. So A is riskier and A is more valuable. And it's just a matter of going out and finding the numbers, the present values, and the expected returns in order to answer a question like this.